Hi all of you out there in internet land and the students who are currently taking my module with me on, uh, well, a real numbers. Okay, as I say, those of you who are watching outside of my classroom, ugh, do you need to do any work? No, kick back, grab a Coke. And by that I mean a can of Coke. And just put your feet up. Watch a bit of telly and watch this in the other half of your mind. It's all fine. Otherwise, hey, if you actually have me, that's the work I want you to do. Right, in a previous lesson, we have looked at how to put fractions onto a number line and how to add decimal numbers. Yes, I know, mind-blowingly exciting stuff at the best of times, which are all important year six skills. We will now complete the recap of year six. Now, what do I mean by recap of year six? Those of you in internet land, we are teaching math in a very different way in Australia, a very funky way, and I just said Australia. We do the bits and only teach the bits the kids don't know. We don't teach all the year six stuff if they don't need it. And so thankfully, we are skipping on soon to the year seven stuff. Right, now, firstly, we've got to do with multiplying decimals. The easiest way to multiply decimal numbers is actually using a calculator. But bearing in mind the pre and post test that you guys do won't let you use a calculator, you're out of luck, right? Obviously, you'll never make a mistake. But in maths, some exam papers, actually insist on us using pencil and paper methods. Now, when we do whole number multiplications, there are certain rules we can use. Firstly, there is uh, the bang a zero in rule. Now, here we go. So when you multiply numbers together, and I got people up on the board doing this, and even when I asked them, why are you doing this? No one actually knows. They got some random ideas, but this is what I mean. If I do 32, times 46, for example. Well, first things first, we do six times two. So we do the six times the two, and it becomes 12. Now, I'm gonna put my little one down there, internet land. Those of you in the UK will be very happy with this. Those in Australia will be most unhappy, but just deal with it. And then I do this six times the three. I don't know why, I just do that. That's the way I've always been taught to do it. So six times three is 18. Then I add the one, which makes 19. And I put the one there, and I rub the one out there so that I don't get confused. Now. This is where life gets interesting. I just put a zero in. Why do I put a zero in? Well, lots of people will be screaming, it's got to do with place value. But what does it have to do with place value? Huh? <laughs> now I choose this random four and multiply it by the two. Why? Who knows? The four times the two is uh, eight, yes, and then four times three is uh, 12. And then for some completely inexplicable reason again, I add them together. Why don't I take them away? Who knows? I just add them together. Two plus zero is two. Nine plus eight when I went to school is 17. I put the one down there. One, two, three, four. And there we go. I now know that 32 times 46 is equal to 1,472. That has to be the most random thing I have ever, ever had to teach someone. It makes absolutely no sense. Now, I went to a course once with a really, really awesome math teacher, and he was like, why do we keep teaching everyone in year six and seven this random method here? It makes no sense. We know that actually we can split it up into a different thing. So let's do 32 times 46 again. So we've got 32 times 46. Now, we know that can be written as I'm going to draw a grid, and I'm going to put a little times here. I know that 32 can be written as 30 and 2. That makes sense. And I know 46 is 40 and 6. Ah, now all we need to do, and we can do most of this in our head, is everywhere we see a box, we multiply the row by the column. So the box I've just highlighted there, 30 times 40, well, is 1,200. This box has got 2 and 40 which is 80. I go down to this box here, and it's 6 and 30, which is 180, and 6 and 2, which is 12. And then, ladies and gentlemen, all I need to do is add those numbers together. So, but doing there, 8 and 8 is 16, and 1 is 17. Put the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 4, 7, 2. Is that what we got earlier? Well, I should go, go, we did, is 1, four, seven, two. I didn't have to worry about putting random zeros in the way. I didn't have to do anything. I just, huh? 
Wow. Now, actually, the reason this works and is really, really helpful is actually when we come back to uh, year 10 maths, and I know you guys are a long way away from year 10 maths, you actually do the same thing with algebra. Where actually, we can use this box method to do x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 3. Now again, I'm not going to show you why this works, but I'm just going to turn around and say, well, x times x is x squared, 2 times x is 2x, 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 2 is 6. And then because the rule says, or because I know then that I'm just going to add those together, I get x squared plus 5x's, because 3x's and 2x's make 5x's, plus 6. So, so awesome. And this works in exactly the way as multiplication. We'll just do one more example. Let's do 147 times 63. Works with those numbers as well. All you've got to do is split it up into boxes. Now, in this case, my box is going to have three numbers along the top. 147 and 63. We even say it the right way. When I multiply those together, 60 times 100 is 6,000. 60 times 40 is 2,400. And 7 times 60 is 420. 3 times 100, 300. 3 times 40, 120. And 3 times 7 is 21. So when I add all those together, 6,000, 2,400, 420, 300, 120, and what did I say, 21. Add those together, we get 1. 2, 4, 6, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 6, 7, 8, 9. Hopefully, if I put that into my calculator, 147 times 63, 147 times 63 gives me the staggering answer of 9,261. Well done, Darren. Tick and smiley face. There is actually another way of doing it called the Chinese method, I think, and you draw lines and you count dots. It's phenomenal, but I've never remembered it, so it can't be that easy. All right, now, we can actually apply the same learning to decimal numbers. But firstly, we have to do some simple addition. What does that mean? Well, when multiplying decimals together, we count all the numbers which fall after the decimal place. Huh? Right, here we go. Right, let's, let's do an example. Um... 6.3 times 3.7. Right, firstly, when multiplying to that, yeah, we're doing that, count all the numbers which fall after this one place. Well, there's one number here, and there's two numbers there. So there's two. Write it in a circle. Two in a circle. And then ignore the decimal points. Oh, awesome. So I can just write 63 times 37. Do the multiplication like you would normally do. All right, um, here's my pencil and paper. Quick box, grid, grid. 63, 37, uh, that's 1,800, that's 90, that's 420, and that's 21. So 1,800 and 420 and 90 and 21. Add those together, give me 2, 4, 13, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13. Do, right, cool. So when I multiply that together, it gives me 2, 3, 3, 1. But what does that have to do? Do the, no, no, no. Put the decimal places back in. Ah, because I took out two decimal numbers or two places after the decimal, I just put the decimal point back in. Two numbers from the end. Do you see? I had three and the seven afterwards. That was two numbers. There is my decimal point and I've got two numbers after it. OMG, ladies and gentlemen, there is your multiplication done brilliantly. What about this one? A lot of people go to me, oh, okay, so what if I had 7.23 times 8? All right, so how many decimals are there after decimal points? Well, I can only see two numbers, so again, I'm going to put two in. And a lot of people now go, oh, okay, well, I'm now going to do this grid method for just about everything, and I'm going to have 723 times 8. And I'm about this point going to say, nah, that's silly. We, you could do it this way, but why don't you just do 723 times 8? If it's a single digit, as 8 is, then just do it the way you know. So 3 times 8 is 8, 16, 24. Carry the 2. 2, 8 to 16, 17, 18. 7, 8, 49, 56, and 57. 
So that is 5784. How many numbers did I have after the decimal point? I had two, so I'm gonna put my decimal point in and lo and behold, there is my answer. And it works, I don't know, with all sorts of numbers. What about 0 0.64 times 7.2? Well, how many decimal points have we got? One, two, three, write it in a circle. Now, I could write 0 0.64 times 72, but we should know that we don't need the zero. All right, uh, right, so what do we do now? Well, that's an ordinary one. I can do 60 and four and 70 and two, 64, 72, there's my little grid, put a little kissy kissy there, 6, 36, that's 4, 2, 0, 0, 7, 14, 20 on 280, 120 and eight. So adding each of those individual boxes together, 280, 120 and eight, add those together, that gives me eight, and that gives me 10, Eight and two and then two four five and six and 46 so that whole thing gives me four six oh eight and so I can now write that six point four oh hello nurse I can now write that zero point six four times seven point two gives me I've got to put it in three places from the end four point six zero eight now a word of warning ladies and gentlemen if I had written 64 times 72 was 4.608. My examiner would mark me wrong. Why? Well, because blatantly 64 times 72 does not equal 4 point anything. Don't get your working out. I wrote the long answer here and then I rewrote the question out with the correct answer here. Really, that's all there is to multiplying decimals. We've taken a little bit of a jaunt through how we do it normally. We've looked at different ways of doing it. If you like doing it long multiplication, knock yourself out. But otherwise, that's the end of this lesson. Thanks very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed watching this video, why not tune in and subscribe to get updates of when I do other videos. Alternatively, click this video that's coming up now, or just zip on over to mathsguru.com, M-A-F-F-S, guru.com, where you can actually access all the videos in a nice, easy to use way.